everybody. Welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life-changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith, encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Lamar Darnell Shields. Let's do that one more time, sound bombers. And welcome to Sound Bombing. This is your friend, Dr. Lamar Darnell Shields, and I am so excited that you decide to join me today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are listening, thank you. As we always do, we start out with our breath because that is what we call the breath of life. What that says is that we are still alive and I am alive and you are here joining me in the bomb shelter. And if you joined me last week, you heard Lorna Little, the president and CEO of St. Anne's, in Los Angeles, California. She talked about women and leadership. She talked about the work that they're doing since the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the country in particular, has hit Los Angeles and the great things that she's doing. And she inspired some women who are in leadership positions or women who want to move up in leadership positions. And she talked about some of the struggles of being a woman in leadership position and a woman of color and an artist as well. So thank you for tuning in to my friend Lauren a little. And now I have another artist that's joining me in the studio and I'm going to talk and bring her up eventually, but I believe that art matters more than ever during the COVID-19 crisis. And I want to bring on someone to talk to me about the role of artists right now. You all know I'm an artist and in this time of crisis and in isolation, the role of art becomes more central to, to in our lives, whether we realize it or not. People are dying, critical resources are stretched, and the very essence of our freedom is shrinking. And yet we are moved inward to the vast inner space of our thoughts and imagination, a place we have perhaps neglected. Of all the necessities we now feel so keenly aware of, the arts and their contribution to our well-being is evident and in some ways central to coronavirus confinement for those of us locked in at home. For some, there are more pressing needs, but momentary joys, even in dire circumstances, often come through the arts and collective expression. As an artist, I am constantly encouraging people to find an artistic voice and identify in this crowded world of images some touchstones to develop their own aesthetics. Especially in this time of crisis and isolation, the role of art becomes more central to our lives, whether we realize it or not. And one of the artists that I decide to invite to the bomb shelter, Jody King, is one of those artists. An instructor, a speaker, a kitchen dancer whose mission is to help others evacuate their own or excavate, I'm sorry, their own authentic power and joy through the use of art and creativity. She possesses a combination of playful irreverence of spirituality with almost 20 years of art experience that resonates with her audience from around the world. Jody's no one is the boss of you attitude about painting life and creativity encourages the novice as well as the experience to create in her words, honest art. She is an artist, a performer, and she is a Cajun queen from the state of Louisiana that I know a lot about because I went to Grambling State University in Louisiana. Jody, welcome to the show. 
Thank you. I wish you could see me right now. I am pumping my arms. I am so excited. This is, this is awesome. I'm delighted and honored to be here. Thank you. Now, I know you're a Cajun girl. And I did yes. tell you off air that I went to Grambling, which is in northern Louisiana. And you said, oh, that's another, another side of the world. Can that you explain is. to people the difference between northern Louisiana, where I went to school, which is near Arkansas, and the central and southern Louisiana, from the food to the music to the people? Can you just share with our bombing community? Because <laughs> most people, they only know New Orleans. Break it down to yeah. the people of, of Louisiana, what's happening in, in your area. Okay. I'm going to try to do this without offending anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I had, uh, I grew up in South Louisiana in Abbeville, Louisiana. And I, uh, I did have some distant relatives that lived in North Louisiana. And there is just that certain point. It's only, it's not far. I mean, the state of Louisiana is the size of a postage stamp, but there is a distinct difference when you leave that South Louisiana culture and you go to that, um, Jerry Falwell culture. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm sorry if it's okay. But uh, Louisiana, you know, I was raised, um, it was all family and fellowship, and food, and, um, it, you know, just this raw, honest kind of, you know, way of living. If you've been to New Orleans, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's just a whole lot of fun. I mean, I was raised in the Catholic Church, so it's not like I was a complete heathen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Catholic but school it, boy, too, so I get it. You get it. You get it. Yeah, it's just a different world. And I, I feel so lucky to be raised with, you know, mud between my toes and um, being out in nature. It was just great. I like how you said mud between your toes, That what they call that red clay dirt down in uh -huh. Louisiana. Uh, the smell of Louis Louisiana has a very distinct smell, I must admit. When I used to drive to Louisiana from Chicago, where I'm from, when I got into the state, it was a very, and I'm not going to say it, it smelled bad, but it was a very distinct <laughs> smell <laughs> that I was like, where in the hell did this, this smell, did this smell come from? Um, so I thank you for joining me in the bombshell. First of all, how are you holding up during this pandemic? How are you making out? Well, I'm actually doing really, really well. Um, I almost have a little bit of guilt about saying that, but, um, you know, my, I have two daughters uh, that are 22 and 26 and they were living in New York city. They've been in New York city for about four years. And uh, when the, everything first started with COVID-19, all I could think of was to get my babies home. You know, I'm, I'm a Cajun mama. I'm like any other mama, really. I just needed to get my babies home. And so uh, we flew them out of there March 13th. And it was right before, I don't know if you saw that photo that was kind of all over social media, the packed crowds in JFK trying to get out of the city. That was the next day. So I'm really grateful that they're here. And, you know, um, we are, it's, I, I'm, I'm single and we are three strong willed <laughs> women living together in a house. You know, we haven't been together like this since they were little. And the beauty that's coming out of it is that they're getting to learn about me as a woman and as an artist and they're both artists, but what it means to have a, to run a business and to like see me on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that they haven't since they were young. And I'm getting to learn who they are as young adults and as adults in a way that I wouldn't have been able to without this experience. So I'm grateful for it. I'm also grateful that I have my work as an artist because I'm able to channel uh, all of the, experiences uh you know i have my bad days obviously you know filled with fear and then i'll pull out of that but i'm able to channel these experiences that i'm having through my art and additionally you know be a light worker in the world and um go live i go live every day at one that's something new that i was uh, that i wasn't doing before just to serve people uh, through art, you know, teach them different things and uh, be of service during this time. And that's really, it's been, I, I feel like I've been serving others, but in turn, as you know, you know, as it happens, I get served. Um, I, I, it, it's just a beautiful gift that comes back to me as well. And that's why I wanted to bring you on your photo, the photo of you, just a smile that's coming through the internet, the waves that I've gotten from you looking at your artwork 
look, listen to your conversations. I mean, they have been immaculate and they really, really spoke to me. And that's why I wanted to to bring you on board to talk about the role of art uh, in COVID-19. But before we move to the things that you're currently doing, how did you start making art? And then why did you decide decide to make art? Well, that's such a good question. I'm actually kind of an accidental professional artist because when I was young, I wasn't really one of the uh, one of the the kids that wanted to paint all the time. I was dancing. I danced from the time I was three till I was eleven, five days a week. So, I my art form is really dancing. And it wasn't until I was thirty five. Um, which is uh, 17 years ago, if you could do that math. <laughs> uh, was, uh, this is not a show up for mathematicians. I, I'm an <laughs> educator, so don't try to put me on the spot. I speak Spanish. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so at 35, I, uh, I had young kids at home, and um, it was New Year's Day. And you know how when you're – you just think about your life differently on New Year's Day, what you want. And I was with a group of people – and uh, we were all talking when the guy was an artist. So we were saying, what do we want to do for the new year? And I looked at him and I said, you know, David, I want to be, I, I want to, I want to paint. That's what I want to do this year. I want to learn to, I want to paint. And he looked at me and he goes, so paint. I said, no, no, I don't know how to paint. He said, so paint. And it's such a simple thing, but, you know, it never occurred to me that I could just paint. I really uh, felt like, well, I have to learn. I didn't go to school for this. Who am I to do that something like this? And so I went to the art supply store, got some brushes and some acrylic paints, and I just started to paint. And at first I just painted a, uh, a still life of some flowers that I had. And then I, then I painted uh, a photo of each of my daughters. And then someone said, well, what do you want to paint? And I said, you know, I've had this weird, and I'm going to call it intuition, but, you know, it's that still small voice, right? This weird curiosity feeling. I want to paint women, you know, so figurative. I want to paint women just saying some sassy things, you know, go figure if you if you know who I am. It's not the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did that. I started painting some um some some women saying things like one of the wo- wo- women that I painted, she it was just a, a a torso photo, so it looked like she had a bra on and a, you know, and it said she wore a thong. She wore only a thong while folding the clothes to remind herself she was more than a mother. Mm. And so that's it's just I just hung these throughout my house, and um, a few months later, my home happened to be on a historical tour of homes. And people started walking through and asking about the art, my art in particular, um, because I there wasn't any other fine art. I couldn't afford it. Um, so it was mine. <laughs> That's why it was mine. And uh, they started asking about it, and I couldn't believe it. And one of the ladies was owned a shop in the town that I lived in at the time and asked if she could start carrying my work in her store. So that was, it was just was kind of an accident. I mean, and when she asked me that, I was like, get out of here. You're kidding me. Uh, and so that's where it started. And, and that, is, that was 17 years ago. So you had no formal training, uh, but you had something inside of you that needed to come out. Absolutely. And so, and so when you had this conversation with this gentleman at this party, reflecting on your life, and he just said, just do it and you think Mm -hmm. about it it's it's that simple you like Mm -hmm. just do it and you and you still had some questions did did you did you just hesitate and think like well i haven't gone to school i don't you know never taken a class you know what was it inside of you that 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 you knew that you can actually do this and and then where did that come from yeah well you know um i think it all goes back to uh, after I had been painting for a little while and, and seeing what I was painting, I was thinking, why am I doing this? First of all, I didn't care if it was good or not because I, there was no stakes at, you know, there were in it. I was just doing it for me. And that's what I love about art is it doesn't matter if, if you're going to sell it or not, you do it for you. 
And if it resonates with people, oh my gosh, Jill, then that's, you know, that's everything. But um, I was doing it for me. And one of the things that I always ask uh, myself and artists that I work with is that you, you need to know why, you know, we all have that. What is our why and what our calling is? And uh, my why at the time, and my why is the same now, and I know they can change, but my why is that I wanted to be seen and I wanted to be heard. And I think a lot of our whys come from maybe some primal wounding or uh, a primal place within us. And uh, as a kid, I was, I went through a lot of abuse uh, and uh, didn't feel seen and didn't feel heard. I didn't, I wasn't believed when I spoke. So of course now I'm wanting to write things on my work, right? And I wanted uh, to have a physical representation that I mattered. And that's what, that's why I paint. That's why I do what I do. And that's why I teach what I teach because now, of course, I, I want the world to, to feel this feeling like they are seen and that they matter. And um, so I love the fact, I'm not that, sure I answered. No, question, you know, you answered but, the question, but I love the fact that you talked about finding your why and you, you hear that quite a bit and you know, finding your why and finding your passion or finding your life purpose. Are there some questions that you had to ask yourself uh, when you talked about finding your why in the art field? And are there some questions that other artists that might be out there or other individuals who are being creative during this time? Because I know that this has been a very creative space for me. Are there some questions that they should be asking themselves about finding their why, finding their passion, finding their gifts during this time? Sure. And, you know, um, I have to just <laughs> tell you, when when mentors would ask me, well, what is your why? It used to piss me off. I was like, I just want to paint. Leave me alone. I can't my why be that I just want to put, you know, pretty stuff out into the world. And they would challenge me on that. They would challenge me to go, but why? But why do you want to put things like that into the world? And so a question that you know, so many of us have this time right now. And if we're, if we decide to not fill it with Netflix or other things, and we choose to sit with where we are in our lives, um, and we choose to sit with why am I doing what I'm doing? One of the things that helps me is meditation and journaling to get to really some deep, um, deep stuff that maybe I'm feeling that I wouldn't get to otherwise. So my, my, um, I would encourage people if they don't have a meditative practice, uh, to this is as good a time as any, <laughs> since a lot of people have a little extra time on their hands, um, is to have a meditative practice and a journaling practice to get to their why, because this time is really causing people to you know, to rethink a lot of things in our lives. So you mentioned, you mentioned two steps that I love and I agree with meditation as well as journal writing. Um, is that a part of your creative process? If not, can you walk us through what your creative process is as you're approaching the canvas or as you're approaching the paint or as you're going to the store to purchase item uh, items, walk us through your creative process. Yeah. So meditation and journaling is part of my um, creative process and particularly um, the meditation part. So my creative process involves uh, before I sit and paint or before I, I paint anything, I don't sit when I paint, but before I paint anything, I sit and I meditate. And there are, there are a few reasons for that. Uh, Number one, I have a lot of energy and I can be a little uh, scattered uh, and a little ADD in the best way, I think. Um, but I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of interest. I get distracted really easily. And uh, especially with what's going on right now, it is very hard for me to concentrate. Like a lot of people, I don't know if you've had this experience, but it's been very hard for me to concentrate. And so when I sit down and I meditate, that provides this grounding for me to become present to where I am right in that moment. So, you know, the simple practice of feeling, you know, the bottom of my feet on the floor and going, walking through a meditative practice like that, that has a grounding so that when I 
do get up and I approach the canvas, I am to create what I call honest art. It's, it's from a, it's from a, a, a settled grounded place. The second reason why it's really helpful to meditate before I paint is uh, it's almost like that process opens up a portal. And, you know, I, I believe that we are all creative because we all come from the greatest creator ever. And so that creativity comes from this place. And so the meditation really opens up that portal of creativity. And by the way, there are times when I think, I don't have time to meditate before I paint. I've only got like an hour. I'm not going to waste it meditating when I can be painting. And 100% of the time, that work is just awful. It's just, it's just I'm, I'm so show. glad you said that because the creative people that I bring on to a sound bombing, they talk about their process. And I am an avid meditator, been meditating for years. And the days that I don't do my morning rituals and routine and meditation is one of them, I can feel the difference throughout the day that I didn't do it. It's almost like how right? many of us are married to our cell phone. Let me, I know people, you know, Jody, they'll leave their cell phones home. And they'll be halfway to work. Let's just say you work in the city in New York and you live in Brooklyn. You get all the way into the city. Like I left my cell phone. People leave, people will leave their medicine before they'll leave their, their cell phone. And <laughs> so I, right. I say that to say is that when I don't do my rituals and routines, I can see the difference in my day as I approach my work. When I sit down to do an interview, like I'm sitting down with you, I light a candle. I do, I do a breathing exercise and thank you for joining me uh, to do that. When I'm doing my research on you all, that's why people love my introduction. They say, Lamar, you give the best introduction because I want to elevate the people that are here. And then I, then I close my eyes and then I imagine what the listeners of the show are feeling when they're listening to not just my voice, but people like you. And so those rituals are very, very important. I'm so glad that you said that when you don't put those rituals in place, then the artwork goes into a different direction. It's not, you know what? It's not real. It's uh, when I say real, it feels like, um, it, it feels like it's trying to be something else. It just never works. Um, and, and, and when I stand up and I get to the canvas, what I do is you can imagine it, you know how when you come out of that meditation, you just feel so good. It's just, it's, it's good. But sometimes if I'm being honest with where I am in my life, it's not good. I mean, we just have those times. I just went through a, a pretty difficult time the last year and a half. And there are a lot of days that were bad. And then when I get to the canvas, sometimes all I do is I just start writing profanity, you know, because that's honest. That is a, that is a ex, external, um, isn't this something? Uh, let me let me just say, I know you you a Catholic Cajun girl, and I grew <laughs> up in a Catholic church with a with a Islamic background, so I'm all over the place. But isn't this yeah. something about just curse? And I don't curse a lot, but like days of just using profanity, screaming, <laughs> right? It's it is so freeing. Like I'll put a pillow over my face, and I'll just start saying these crazy <laughs> words, yeah. like with a pillow over my face, and you then I come up. And you I'm can like, make them up. and then I'm like free. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so to hear you say that you just start throwing these words on this canvas, this profanity, and it's freeing, but it works for you. It does. It, it works. It does. It's a, that's your process. It's a, it, it, it it absolutely is, and it's a like I said, it's if 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 I know my why, which is to be seen and to be heard. And not be ashamed of that, by the way. I used to be ashamed of uh, when I realized what my why was. Oh, I was thought, oh. And I and I discovered that, Jody, when I was doing my research on you, I, that you were excited about the gifts, but then, in fact, actually you felt ashamed of it. Can you explain that? Sure. Well, uh, because, you know, we've been taught, or maybe I've just felt, but I, I think a lot of times we've been taught that um, – especially as women, that to be seen and to be heard and to take up space um, is, is selfish. And we should always be thinking of others first. And when I thought, oh my God, am I a narcissist? You know, when I thought I, I want to be seen, I want to be heard, I immediately thought, well, that's, that can't be good. I must be selfish. I must be 
a narcissist. But the truth that now I don't believe it. I think that's all bullshit now. But when, at the time, that is exactly what I felt. And I thought, oh, no, I, I'm becoming what I what I didn't want to be. And then I, I, you know, it took me a while to unpack that. And I realized, you know what, every it's of my birthright. I didn't I didn't come to to this earth to uh, with gifts, not to share them. And um, and so now I'm proud to say, uh, you know what, I want to be seen and I want to be heard. And that's OK. Not only is it OK, it's important. It's really important. And I and it's because I would want that for other people. If you said that to me or my daughter said that to me or anybody I know said that to me, I, I would look at them. I would give them a hug and I would say, I, I understand. I get it. And you deserve that. Now, listening to you talk about being seen and heard, I'm reflecting on a guy who's from the city that I'm from. You might have heard of him. His name is Kanye West. And (laughs) Kanye West was interviewed. This was years ago. And I wish, Jody, that I can find this interview. This is before his mom died, Dr. West, Mm -hmm. who I got a chance to meet. Mm -hmm. And we many people who watch Kanye West, you can see the difference when Dr. When when Dondi, you know, Dondi West, his mom died. You can see the difference. But but Jody Kanye was interviewed and you never know where you're going to get your information from. I tell people it can come in a it can come from a, a, a homeless guy on the street or it can come from a imam or a rabbi. But I was watching yeah. MTV and Kanye probably had just been out maybe for about five or six years. And the guy that interviewed him says this. He says, I hear that you are an artist, a painter. And it caught me by surprise. And, our, and Kanye paused and says, yes. And he says to the guy who was interviewing him, he said, but art was not loud enough for me. So I went into hip hop. Mm. It was, isn't that poetic? So he that said it wasn't beautiful. loud enough for me. So now understanding his personality as an individual, mm-hmm. you know, Kanye paints, he's a, he's a clothes designer, you know, mm-hmm. he's doing a lot of great work, but mm-hmm. he said it wasn't loud enough for him. But I'm hearing you say as an artist that it is loud, that you can dance and you can do all those things and still and well, still and the still way do I that. do it the way you do it the way that you do it and so when you were describing yeah. that being seen and heard I, I thought about that and then I want to go back to something that you just said you you described your artwork as what you would call honest art what does mm-hmm. honest art mean well honest art means that it's the truth of of my experience and and I'm saying this in relation to uh, I, I primarily paint in abstract art right now. I do some mixed media stuff, but if if abstract art is a, an expression, then I want my expression to be as authentic as an expression as possible. And what I see is a lot of people find art that they like and they think, ooh, I want to paint because I want to paint like that. And when people come and work with me, I tell them right up front, I'm not going to teach you to paint like me, but I'm going to help you excavate what you have and what your voice is and help you paint like you. And that to me is honest art because we all have something that we need to express or say, and it doesn't serve anybody to be a copycat. It's like somebody trying to be Meryl Streep. There's only one Meryl Streep. <laughs> There's only one Kanye West. There, so Thank goodness for why, that. Say that again. There's only one <laughs> Kanye West. Thank you. There's only one <laughs> Kanye West. We don't, we don't have enough room in this planet for two Kanye <laughs> So uh, honest art is an authentic, real, raw, personal expression of whatever it is that needs to come out of you, whether that's music or poetry or dance or paint it's it, the the more honest the art the more it's going to resonate with people we don't i mean it's just like who wants vanilla ice cream i mean some people do it depends on if it's on apple pie but i mean <laughs> it's like you want that just be as as bold and and honest and raw as you can about yourself and you free other people to do the same. So what is it about art that frees or liberates you? Well, because nobody's going to be the boss of me. I'm going to do it however I want. (laughs) I just pictured you in Louisiana in church and your mother pinches your leg because you said something and you still made this face. 
because I nobody's going to be the boss to me. <laughs> That's right. I got my mouth washed out with soap so many times as a kid. So it, it, <laughs> it, it, go ahead, go ahead. So I was just, it's not relevant, but one time I was on a playground and this girl bit me and I turned around and said, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher didn't see her bite me. She just heard her heard me say that. And I got my mouth washed out with and she was fine. I'm still bitter about that. <laughs> So, that's so art, my why. that's that's your why <laughs> you're getting back at her. So your art is freeing and liberating you because you control it. That's what I'm hearing you say. Exactly. So, so what is so so then what is your whatever I want? So you can say whatever. So what is your what is your work aimed to say? Well, it depends on the day, but um, you know sometimes, well, usually my work is means to say that everybody gets to be the boss of them. That. Um, you know, I'm looking at this painting right now that I did of Willie Nelson and uh, on what's written on it, it says, roll me up and smoke me when I die. <clears throat> and that's just kind of the perfect thing as an artist is that we, we get to be the fullest expression of who we are. That's what my work says is, is you do you. Let's all be the fullest expression of who we are. Let's love each other hard. Let's be kind and honest and real, but let's just, let's be who we were here. Let's, let's live into the fullness of who we were sent here to be. Mm. So when you're, when you're designing your artwork, creating your artwork rather, do you pay attention to other, st others strong reactions to your work or does, and does that affect what you create? It does affect what I create. Um, and only in that I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the kindness. I, I mean, I, the fact that, that I can create something from an honest place, <clears throat> from a, um, a, an expression, uh, and, and to have it resonate with people. Um, it really, it affects me. I, I feel like the work that I've been, uh, that I do in the world matters, but if somebody says to me, you know what, you should paint more of these because that happens, <laughs> then now I can't do that anymore. Mm. <laughs> if somebody tells me you should do more of that, it would, I'm such a toddler. I will probably, that will be the very reason I do the opposite. So um, that's probably, oh my gosh, I'm so stubborn. I'm not saying this is a good thing. Okay. I'm not saying <laughs> be like me. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that uh, I do, I, the work that I create, I create, from me and when it resonates with others there's nothing better you know it is it's just listen to it is such a joy because i'm thinking about my own daughter who's a, my my oldest daughter who is a singer but also an artist i'm looking at a beautiful portrait of her oh. that was created i'm thinking about my niece taylor who is in art school uh in um wisconsin i'm thinking about my other niece who's in the new school up in new york uh, Yay Tunde, who's an artist. I'm thinking about my buddy Jeffrey Ken. I'm thinking about Ernest Shaw. Uh, my son now, who is in a seventh grade, Jody has discovered that he that he he loves drawing. He's been oh, wow. he's been watching uh, the Boondocks. That's a whole other conversation. I don't know if you know about the Boondock, but you talking about profanity and every racial slur. Great show, <laughs> very politically connected. But he's been drawing these characters, and my son is an athlete and is interested in. Um, I would have never thought that this artistic side would come out. My my youngest daughter, who's an actress, I mean, it's it's in their blood. It's, it's in their mom's blood. It's it's, it's in my blood. Um, and so to hear you talk about this, and you started later in life is is very very inspirational to those artists that are out there because a lot of times people think that you have to start early and that that you have to go to art school and it's okay taking classes i believe it's okay to read some books but again i like how you said i want to paint i'm going to do it no here, here's another question for you as it relates to that do you think that creativity involves putting your heart and soul into your work or is it more letting your mind flow freely to witness the surprising results of your actions because my daughter and i are always talking about creativity and how it actually flows uh well i love that first of all my daughter went to the new school she's graduating well not oh, graduating, wow. she, yeah yeah so that's really funny um and you know uh the, before i answer that that question and um, i'm writing it down so i can remember um 
they they did a study. They I don't know who they is. Sorry, but they did I a like story. I like how people say they aren't they everywhere. Who are they? <laughs> yeah, who are they? Somebody did right? a study. But go ahead. <laughs> and they went into a kindergarten class, and they said, "Everybody here who's an artist, raise their hand." And one hundred percent of the kids raised their hand. Mm. And then in third grade, they asked the same question. Went to a classroom. Everyone here who's an artist, raise their hand. Half of the kids raised their hands. And then they did the same thing in middle school and only one child raised their hand. And what that says to me is we are all born artists. We just get a little confused along the way. And uh, so if somebody wants to at any time in their life decide that they want to nurture that part of themselves, you know, I think they should absolutely heed the call. Um, now, can you ask me that question? <laughs> no, I know it was a long question. So, so do you think that, um, I gotta think, do you think that creativity involves putting your heart and soul into your work or is it more like letting your mind flow freely to witness the surprising results of your own actions? Okay. Well, um, my experience is the more I am in my head, the worse the art is. So having said that, um, I, what I do is I try to express like onto the canvas, what my body, what I'm feeling in my body, but I'm using intuition. I'm just going to the next right thing and the next right thing and the next right thing. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm trying really hard not to think. And I can stay in that place for about an hour and a half. And then I get into my head. And as soon as I get into my head, it all goes south from there. Now, but and rather, but and I have, I know the tools to get myself unstuck. Like I know that if some, I know to, what to look for. In other words, if something's not looking right, I look to see if there's enough values in the, in the colors, right? Look at my values. I know how to look for composition. I know how to look for those things that are really more cerebral head things. So I don't think you can do have one without the other because at some point you do need to get into your head to say, all right, how am I going to figure this little puzzle out here? Um, because 100% of the time when I paint a painting, th there's a point in it where it's just like, well, that's it. I'm a hack. You know, the, all those other thousands of paintings I did that came out good, that was just a fluke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so at that point, that's when I got to get in my head a little bit and go, okay, what, what does this need? What do I, what can I do here? So I think it's both, but I don't, if I approach a painting all in my head, I, it, do, it doesn't work. You know, I want to go back to something that you said about the, the about the research, because I'm very familiar with that article as well, because I'm constantly talking about pouring, uh, you know, pulling out of young people that's in them. And I was, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about Pablo Picasso, his quote where he says, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. What mm -hmm. advice do you have for parents who who have a child, who has a child or children who have children who are artists who say that this is what I want to do, mom, dad, for a living. Uh, and mom and dad are like, we want you to make a living. We want you to go to school. We want you to get a job. We want you to graduate. What advice do you have for those parents that, I'm, that are listening and they have a kid who is an artist? Well, I'm a perfect person to ask about that because I've got two artists for kids. So my oldest daughter uh, did theater. Now she's a comedian. Uh, and my uh, youngest daughter is a writer. And um, if we look at the current situation of our um, economy right now and all those people who thought, well, I'm going to get myself a safe job, uh, that doesn't look so safe anymore. And so what I would say to a parent whose uh, child comes to you and says that they want to be an artist, I would say <clears throat> to um, encourage that as much as you can to help them uh, get the skill sets that they need because there's nothing, there's no, you know, quote, job that's safe. There's nothing that's safe. There's just something that we're going to have to get up and do every single day and we might as well love it and we might as well learn how to make it a business because so often artists are not good business people. And I'm actually a serial entrepreneur. I, you know, I had 
I used to have a wine bar. I started an organic clothing company. I've done, I've done several different things. And so that's why I've been able to be successful as an artist because I have a business acumen to me. So if your child comes and says, I want to be an artist, I would just encourage that so much and also encourage them to know how to run a business with it. Mm. So speaking of running a business, I want to I want to talk with you about how you we talked about how do you approach your piece of artwork and you, you talk about monetizing your gifts. I want to talk about your tools now. Now, what is your most important artist tool? And is there something you can't live without in your studio when you are creating a piece of artwork? Well, yes, I mostly paint with, oh gosh, that's going to be really hard. That's going to be really hard. So I paint a lot with paper towels, believe it or not. Explain that. <laughs> okay. So there's, are you familiar with uh, shop towels? These blue towels yes. that are mm -hmm. super absorbent yep. shop towels. Mm -hmm. uh, I always have shop towels in my studio and I paint with them. And oftentimes what I'll do is once it gets to about half the roll, then I will use that like a paintbrush. Like I'll actually scoop out the paint from the bucket with the roll of paper towels and apply it in that way. So my shop towels, I would say I would be, that's one of them that I just, I, it would be so weird to paint without them. I also use them to, when I spray water on the canvas and then I, t I remove paint with the towels and, or paper towels. So I would say my shop towels, and I know that's, Kind of strange but i have a whole youtube video of me painting with shop towels <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna link all your videos to uh you know to the site once the show goes okay, live so you'll see you'll see all of those things so what if if i was a, one of your students what should i expect from being in a class um with miss jody king well i would say first of all to not to wear your play clothes because you will be in the splash zone um, we, uh, if you came to a workshop with me, first of all, we're going to meditate and we're going to journal. Uh, we are going to, we're going to do some dancing because I love to have music on and dance, uh, while I paint. I love that energy to, it's a very high energy experience. Uh, we're going to paint together. We are going to probably do a little crying. Uh, just because we're trying to get to uh, some real, raw, honest art. And you can't do that if you're just kind of sitting on the surface. Uh, and we just, we have a really good time. We we may day drink. Uh <laughs> because it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> we just have a ball. And uh, you, I promise you, you will come away with a better understanding of uh, not just painting, but it's a whole transformative experience. I don't just teach people how to paint. Um, so it's a transformative experience. Who are some of the people that come to your workshops and your classes, like profession wise? Oh gosh, everything. And you know, some people have never painted before and other people are, are experienced, but uh, I've had, uh, let's see, last year in Sedona, I had a woman who was a, a doctor of Chinese medicine. She had she um, left there and she started selling her work as soon as she got home. She didn't, she was not a, a quote painter at the time. Uh, we have people who are, uh, you know, work in manufacturing. And so one of them is a, a writer, you know, all, all different professions. Some of them have just been, you know, they, I don't want to say just been because to me it's the highest calling, but they've been a mom for years and they've just like, They've lost themselves. They've given to others so much that they're they're coming to give themselves something. So it's all different people, all walks of life, all levels, and it's um, it's a, my honor to be able to work with them. So, so Jody, I want to share a quote with you from the artist, uh, the Peruvian artist Cara Aravalo, and she says, "Our society is so lost. While I'm here painting and being inspired by how beautiful our planet is, it's all just burning down." How are you staying inspired during this COVID-19 pandemic? I think I'm staying inspired during this time the way I'm inspired every other time. And that is, um, I look at the helpers, you know, as Mr. Rogers says, I look for the helpers and I look for the good. I look for the beauty and, uh, you know, just a flower. I just look for, I look for what's working, you know, every day in my house with, like I said, uh, 
all these fiery women, you know, it's not always a, a great day, but uh, I always look for what, you know, what good is coming out of it. And, and that's inspiring me and watching um, the compassion of people right now is so inspiring to me. Um, and that's, I mean, talking about honest art, that is just, uh, what a beautiful way to live. Who are some of the artists that inspire you living or, or dead? Well, uh, uh, certainly Frida Kahlo. Now you say it, you know, Kanye for sure. Um, <clears throat> I love, I, you know what? I have so many musical artists that are, are big for me. Um, of course, now that I'm thinking about visual artists, um, I'm I'm drawing a blank other than like Helen Frankenthaler and R Frida Kahlo and yeah I'm a hu I'm a huge fan of Frida Kahlo her husband Diego uh -huh. Rivera love Diego, her movie yeah. love her history learning so much more about her in this entire Me Too movement because the life that she lived the lifestyle I was I was a little confused about her early on when I was I was I was I wasn't joking I do speak Spanish and teach Spanish and mm -hmm. we would study Spanish. Um, uh, Latin Latin American artists or just or, or more artists of Hispanic or Latin heritage and I was very I was I was drawn to her work but then as I started to mature and studying art and design and colors and schemes and just all of those things I started to grow and like start to realize more and more about her about her empowerment as a woman and what and what she was able mm -hmm. able to do and so when you mention her name I sort of just um, lit up so how can our listeners get in contact with you if they want to take a class, if they want to, are you doing anything virtually right now? Yes, I'm doing a, a, several things virtually right now. Uh, they can find me by going to jodyking.com. And my name is spelled J-O-D-I-E-K-I-N-G.com. So they can find me there. They can also find me on Instagram at J-O-D-I-E underscore King underscore. Uh, I have a color course. It's called the Color Course for Rebels uh, that I'm uh, an online course that people are loving because color is very, very big for me. Uh, and that really teaches uh, how to build, how I build my paintings as well with color. And then I, I released a course this, this month called Unstuck Yourself. So a lot of people are stuck um, and sometimes when you get into that painting, not sometimes, every single time for me, there's a place where you get stuck. So it's, um, it's just a little workshop that helps you get unstuck. And then in May, I don't know when the podcast will come out, but, uh, I'm actually, I've had a huge, um, amount of a request right now for me to teach the business side of the art business. And I think that's indicative of, you know, the, uh, the, the virus that's going around people wanting to pivot. So I am starting a, um, the business of the art business in the middle of May. Uh, but other than that, you know, my in-person workshops are on hold right now, but anytime somebody wants to just find me on social media or message me through my website, I love um, getting a chance to visit with you. I run my social media. It takes a ton of my time, but it, it's all me doing it. And so I love connecting with people. Well, speaking of biz, speaking of the business part of being an artist, um, what are some strategies that an artist, a visual artist can take or what advice do you have for them if they want to monetize their gifts? Well, um, I would say, first of all, to cast your net wide. So a lot of folks try to, they, they say, well, I tried to sell my my paintings online and it didn't work and so to that my question would be well where did you do what did you do where did you put it and um how often were you there so for instance for i sell my work through social media on instagram i sell a lot of work through there but at the same time i also have it on my website i also have it on online galleries i are, i am also in galleries that you know post my work um and there are other things like uh, websites, like first dibs, et cetera, where you can post your work. So I, I and, and by the way, when I say my website, I'm also talking about um, creating an email list where when I create new work, I will send it out to my collectors. So cast your net wide and be willing to be visible. So for visual artists, and uh, I'm speaking from experience, by the way, for visual artists, to put themselves out there personally uh, can feel really, really challenging. But 
uh, the more that you can make yourself seen, the more people are going to be inclined to want to know what you're up to and to buy your work. And, and I've said this before, but I don't want to buy work from somebody I don't like, you know, and the more people like you, the more they're going to want to um, be involved with what you're doing and um, possibly become a collector of yours. Such a great point. So artists out there, it's time to monetize your gifts. Stop just yeah. giving your stuff away. There's some things you want yeah. to give because the people that give the most have the most, but we want you to monetize your gifts. So Jody, thanks for joining me. But before you leave, we have to do my favorite part of the show. It's called the Super Bomb Questions, where I get a chance to ask you some really, <laughs> really cool questions and you are going to respond as quickly as possible. Are you ready? Oh gosh, I'm nervous, but yes. <laughs> All right, Jody, here we go. What is your favorite word? Uh, boss. What's your favorite quote? Or it can be a scripture or a Bible verse. Uh, oh gosh, I have so many. Um, what's the best that could happen? What's your superpower? Uh, my gratitude. What's your spirit animal? A hawk. What do you wish you had more time to do? Uh, pet dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what moves you? That's funny. That's pet real. dog. That's a good one. You know, that, that's, that's a good one. I've never heard that, but we're going to take that. Uh, what moves you to tears of joy? <laughs> Petting dogs. <laughs> <laughs> what moves you to tears of sorrow? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, seeing people hurting I could play this game with you all day what <laughs> um, what dead person would you most like to meet or get advice from uh, Jesus mm. what is the book or books you've given most as a gift and why uh, what have I given hmm uh, that would insinuate that I give books. <laughs> <laughs> so we. Uh... <laughs> wait, I know it. Don't, don't wait. Don't give up on me. I mean, I'm. Gonna... <laughs> I, I talk about the artist way a lot. Artist like, way, camera. great, great, yeah. great book. What is yeah. the best or most worthwhile investment you've ever made? In myself. Hmm. Investing in myself to uh, advance my craft. So while I'm self-taught, I have taught. I have a taken some workshops and you know done some masterminds and stuff so that's been the best investment walk us through your morning routine uh i wake up uh turn on the coffee pot i um i wish i this wasn't it but i do check i check my email <laughs> sorry i don't know what i'm supposed to and then but it doesn't last long uh and then i i meditate and i journal and then i get to work if you were in the Miss America talent competition, what would your talent be? <laughs> oh, God. It would definitely be dancing. Definitely. Dancing. dancing. Definitely. Well, we're going to dance on right out of here. Jody. it has been a pleasure <laughs> talking to you. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, it was my pleasure, my honor, and um, take good care of yourself. You are a ball of joy. You are amazing, and you are funny as hell. So I thank <laughs> you for joining me, and I thank you for making this planet just beautiful during this during this pandemic, and I thank you for encouraging other artists. I also want to thank my engineer, Alec Blanc, my producer, Kimberly Peterson, Supremacy for our theme music, and all of you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, stop being stingy. I'm on all the platforms, so there's no reason to say, Lamar, we can't find you. And if you want to know more about me, you can visit drlds.com drlds.com and as always believe that something wonderful is about to happen and that some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess thanks for tuning in and do something for someone other than yourself today and go out and paint jody right go out and paint okay. right go do it go do it go do it thanks for tuning in peace <laughs>